All right, guys, welcome back to the monthly cup number 16. We've had quite a few. We've had a, over a year of monthly competition and we're still going strong here in 2017. Joining me on the desk is Scorch. How are you doing, Scorch? You excited for this game? Good morning to everyone in uh, in the North Americas. I know we have a couple new uh, uh, American players, I think, in this monthly cup. And good, I guess, early afternoon to those in Europe. I'm very much looking forward to this monthly cup. It's, uh, you know, they always bring out the best players. And today is, I think, going to be no exception. Yeah, I'm excited to see our first match, especially. We won't go into that just yet. Before we kick things off, I want to take a look at this bracket so we can get an idea of what crazy matchups we have coming up in the first round. I'm going to dodge the one in the top left-hand corner. Which let's not talk about that <laughs> one just yet. But yeah, we have some exciting players participating. We have the usuals like Canfic and Zarakar Mayhem, Sweetie, you know, the French representatives are going in strong, but we're starting to get some more representatives from the Asian communities. Japan are definitely making a making an impact in the tournaments at the moment. Sunkichi, SKC, Masaka, you know, we got these guys coming in, of course. Don Pork representing Korea and K Holic. You know, we, we're starting to see a more global representation in this competitive cup. Yeah, early on it was uh, kind of the mainly the major European, and then we had... A surprise every now and then when uh, we saw a new flag up on the monthly cup, but it's definitely starting to kick off in ways where we're seeing more and more of, especially like you mentioned, the, these uh, Asian players representing their countries here. Yeah, it was mainly kind of France and Germany in the early days of the monthly cup. We had a lot of German representatives, you know, King Dan's back in the day. Um, but then we, France is still going really strong. There's a lot of French <laughs> players here right now, so it's no surprise. Very strong region with inferior but it's exciting to see you know japan and south korea you know really bringing these strong players to the event we actually have a korean matchup here don pork uh in, in one of them you know it's not very often we get to see a first round with two koreans you know having to go at it yeah definitely true uh, and you know kind of following to that as well uh, sunkichi who you mentioned on the other side of the bracket they're playing up against uh, masaka in the japanese matchup uh, and just like you mentioned how well represented France is, Minicaro versus Swap Blues in the bottom there. So uh, always interesting when you get those type of uh, intercompany rivalry games right off, or inter-country uh, rivalry games right off the bat, sorry. But for our first match, we have, wow, we have we have one hell of a game. We have the big one. two monthly cup champions going to duke it out. Alva, our recent monthly cup champion, who won monthly cup 15 versus S of Dawn who's our Monthly Cup 14 champion. They're going to be battling it out in round one. This is just round one. And we have <laughs> Clash of Titans just to kick things off. Yeah, not very often that we get two previous Monthly Cup, or I should say the two previous Monthly Cup uh, champions matching up in the next cup. But to have it in round one is uh, actually insane, the way that the bracket has worked out here. Very interested to see how these play out. Uh, the games play out between these two players. I think we should just get straight into it. Let's let these players do the talking with their cards. Alvar versus S of Dawn. Now, Alvar is off the back of a monthly cup victory, S of Dawn. H how did he do in the last monthly cup? Did he, he didn't get into the top four this time, so he's got a bit of catching up to do in this tournament. Yeah, last monthly cup, he uh, lost it to Zeriker in round three, which I believe will be the quarterfinals. Uh, one three in that one. Interesting note as well. S of Dawn in the monthly cup that he won beat Alvar 3-1 in the opening round. So not only the two champions going against it, but a rematch of the uh, first round that S of Dawn won as well. So, And it looks like Alvar's kicking off with some yellow. Yellow tempo. Actually, both players look like they're representing yellow tempo, but Alvar brought a spicy build to the last monthly cup with the Oversky toe ship. Let's see if he's going to bring it again. Yeah, very interesting addition of those uh, blue cards splashed in. Gave him that extra mobility in the early game. Colossus is actually interesting in here. Sometimes we don't actually see players play that in this tempo deck anymore. I think Colossus has been picking up in popularity recently. Uh, seven life is actually really relevant these days, especially against Yellow Tempo. And the main reason is Kaleem's training. Kaleem's training pushes Manta and the Shaitan Demon up to a, a, a level where they can kill Ground Shakers. And that, that's quite a big deal. So Windstorm Colossus dodges that, and I think that's really important, especially in this mirror. 
Yeah, one of the things that can happen when you have those uh, Windstorm Colossus in your hand, usually the deck is built with more events than creatures because you want that type of synergy to get the discounts. And sometimes you end up with a dead hand. Right here, Alvar, yes, has the Flash Wind. He can go for some play with that. But then you're looking at just Wind Soldier, Windstorm Colossus. Not exactly what you want. You definitely want your earlier creatures like the Manta Rider that S of Dawn has in his hand. And I think a little unfortunate here for Alvar, he kind of felt like he had to play the campfire to protect the Outland Ranger from the Soul Drain, but campfire would be fantastic in this position because the Wind Soldier would be able to clear the Shaitan Demon. Yeah, it still does allow the Outland Ranger to kill the Demon, but then you don't have a great follow-up, which is uh, kind of what I was leading into last turn. Maybe can go for the Windstorm Colossus. It just doesn't look like it's good enough in this position. It gets so heavily punished if your opponent has that removal. There's not many other options. A draw could be the option for Alva. I mean, he's going to go for it, but didn't find anything useful. Soul Drain, not going to be able to take out any of these creatures. I think I like the Colossus play. Just, just hit the desert down, hit the demon, and then just roll a dice to see if Colossus will stick to the board. And if it does, that's a very threatening creature. Yeah, and now, unfortunately for Alvar, because he didn't pick up another creature, he's in a really bad position. If S of Dawn had a Wind Soldier, it would line up perfectly, collect, clear the Outland Ranger, maybe even get an aggressive Prairie down, depending on the way S of Dawn wanted to do it, but doesn't have that option in his hand. Just going to have to possibly clear with the Demon. It, it'll be interesting how aggressive S of Dawn is in this position, because he should read in that Elvar doesn't have anything good in hand right now. Yeah, this is the read I'd be making, that, you know, retreat backwards, no other creatures developed, went for the draw instead of developing land. That tells a player a lot of information about their hands, and this is a perfect opportunity for Esk, you know, take that mobility trick, get rid of this Outland Ranger, stop in a collection. It's, the only thing that could be a concern is the position of the, out, the Origin Fanatic. I like the Origin Fanatic in the center because you play around the Wind Soldier. But it looks like Esadorn is not too concerned about this. Probably just gonna get that Outland Ranger down as well and have additional threats on board. Yeah, really nice land staggering there by S of Dawn. Uh, unsure if he'll go for the campfire here to keep the demon alive and really put the aggression on with these two creatures. But getting that prairie down, then the movement, then the second prairie allows you to put the Outland Ranger right by the orb. And like we were saying, this is a position where you see that your opponent probably has nothing good in hand. So you go as aggressive as possible before they draw something that can get them back into the game. Kaleem Sky Prodigy, not a card we've seen in recent times. Uh, the Star Legendaries, as they're called, Inferior, all had a land increase, and Kaleem didn't really survive that nerf until now. We've seen it in a monthly Cup Champions deck, so it looks like Alva does value the power of Kaleem. Yeah, Kaleem has been something that was cut and then brought back and then kind of decided on here and there by these players. Um, I think another thing with Kaleem is that it just doesn't quite measure up to the Manta Rider, which also sits on that five Varia, three desert spot. And it's just more consistent because you have the Manta on the last words effect. Yeah, Manta Rider is something we haven't really touched on yet. This card is absolutely fantastic. Five really with flying. When it gets destroyed, it generates a two, two flyer with charge. So you get something back when it dies. But another thing to note about Manta Rider, which I think makes it even better, is the use of Kaleem's training. Pushing it to a 6-4 can kill Ground Shakers. That is a huge advantage to take, and you get a 2-2 after it. Yeah, big play here by Alvar. Is this Kaleem going to survive? And right now, SF Dawn does not have any removal, so it looks like it will for now. Another Manta Rider picked up really should give SF Dawn almost like full board control at this point, but like you mentioned, it just needs something extra to be able to clear Kaleem. It only has that five attack you need to get to six here. Wind Soldier picked up off the draw, could use the Wind Soldier to collect from the top hand well. Gonna use the Outland Ranger, take care of Kaleem, which you know is one of the only creatures Alpha has. The, the early hands and the early plays kind of give information on how bad work things were for Alva. And now this is actually an opportunity for Esadorn to play aggressively. He can take the Faria, flash wind across, hit for five, and then even play another Manta Rider. Yeah, this is so much control here. 
the uh, extra movement really coming through for us of dawn able to collect so much feria on that turn and still get that hit to the orb now that he recognizes he is in a powerful enough position to go for it and I don't know from this position how Alvar comes back. Manta Riders are going to give S of Dawn so much control over the board. It's very difficult. Yeah, I mean, Last Nightmare from behind is one of the worst options ever. It doesn't actually do anything uh, because your opponent's going to be able to gain resources on the follow-up turn and just replay another creature. It doesn't do a lot when you're behind. It's a card that's good when you're ahead, and that is why... We are seeing the Colossus come down to just try and limit some of the damage on the next turn. And Colossus is not something that you want to play in a collection position and definitely not something that you want in a defensive collection position. You almost always want that Colossus to dash right to your opponent's orb or at least dash close enough to the orb to hit it on the following turn. Especially with Esodon being on 16, that Shaitan Demon did burn him down a little bit uh, earlier in the game. Alvar maybe can go for uh, kind of a backdoor win here with that Kaleem's training now in hand. Yeah, it needs a bit of mobility to go with it. Could push a lot of damage, but I think the Manta Riders represent so much of a threat here. I'm curious to see if this Manta Rider maybe goes to the middle. Just to say, oh, I have lethal next turn with these two Manta Riders. You can have to build land to, over to the side, you know, in a really awkward position because it moves off a well to just clear the Manta Rider. It might actually just go back to the middle. Uh, of the orb it might just retreat but i like i like central placement here because it again it's just saying i'm gonna have lethal next turn you have to do something about it yeah sf don was definitely looking for another mobility trick rather than this shaitan demon picked up uh would have allowed him to get his second manta rider right to the orb this turn and set up what would have probably been a guaranteed lethal with both manta riders at the orb really no way for alvar to clear everything possible uh, this Manta Rider movement to the middle actually also blocks Alvar's movement with the Kaleem's training and either a Fnatic or a Flashwind going for that two-turn lethal setup. So really nice play by S of Dawn to make what actually ends up being both an aggressive and defensive play in one move. Oh, the Wobbo combo. Definitely the attribute of a monthly cup champion. Covering all bases here with this Manta Rider. Going to take a draw here. Finds another Kaleem's training. Not that helpful. Soul Drain could help the bleeding. You could just Kaleem's train in, hit the Manta Rider on the bottom left, so you block the Manta Rider in front, and then you can just Soul Drain the 2 2. So, you know, there's, there's ways of staying alive here, but Esodon has initiative now. He can take draws, find removal of his own, and things could look really bad very quickly. Yeah, Soul Drain, uh, maybe even a Wind Soldier picked up would have been really nice. And there is the Soul Drain, so that should pretty much guarantee it here that allows the uh, us to clear the colossus again push more damage to the orb and reinforce with another creature in behind just no way that alvar is going to be able to clear this manta rider before it uh, deals that lethal damage so many creatures on board for s Feria is a resource he's gaining an abundance of with this collection but also applying pressure at the same time there may not be a lethal next turn for s of dawn he may pick up a Wind Soldier, but getting back on board against a deck like Yellow Tempo, very, very difficult. So game one, going over to S of Dawn, very convincing fashion. And to be fair, yeah, I mean, I think Yellow Tempo, it kind of tells, the name says it all. If you're going to have a mirror, two Tempo deck mirrors, the first deck that establishes Tempo is generally going to win. And S of Dawn did that very well. Yeah, definitely did. Uh, Alvar with... Uh, it would probably be called a bit of uh, poor follow-up cards after his first Outland Ranger, but really it's the first player who gets the Shaitan Demon or uh, Windstorm Charger, and then the movement to make that first trade really takes just so much advantage in the game. And then you just control the wells. If you're both fighting for the same side, you just Manta Rider off to the other side. It's, it's very easy once you're ahead to stay ahead in that type of a matchup. One of the powers of Yellow Tempo, but another powerful deck Coming out from Alvar here, the Mono Red Combat is one of the tier one decks, as well as Yellow Tempo. So we're seeing the Battle of the Titans here as far as power level goes for decks in Inferior. Yeah, and this is, uh, of course, we didn't see that blue that we kind of alluded to in Alvar's first deck there, but this is probably the lineup that we're expecting to see from most players. The lineup that we saw both of these players win their respective monthly cups with, it is the Yellow Tempo, generally red combat and then the green blue ramp decks to follow that up uh seems like what will be one of the stronger if not the strongest lineup on the day and horse master would be absolutely brilliant here but unfortunately no horse master 
to take care of that Shaitan Demon and rebuild the board with the Axe Grinder. Very defensive play from Alva. And no surprise, like, Alva, Alva and Nessa don't have very different play styles, especially after seeing Alva perform in the last monthly cup. He likes to be quite conservative. He likes to time his moments where he can uh, take the aggression and seize the initiative. And most times, he'll take the more passive play until he feels he's comfortable to take the aggression. Yeah, it's interesting there. Uh... Definitely playing around any form of movement trick coming out from S of Dawn, like that flash win that he just picked up. So really nice read by Alvar. But in that situation, uh, sometimes players will go for moving the axe grinder forward to block your opponent from collecting off of that well. Even you, you know you're comfortable taking the trade, but you just don't want your opponent to get that one fairy advantage. So interesting the way that Alvar plays it, moving back, um, likely because he has the bomb slinger as the follow up. I'm interested to see what happens here. Oh, it's just going to be a Manta Rider by the looks of it. So there was a potential aggressive line from S of Dawn where he could have flash wind down, made an aggressive desert next to the Axe Rider and dropped the Manta Rider and just be right up in Alvar's orb. Uh, but, but decides, you know, take it easy. Just uh, get the Manta Rider in the center. And like last game, we're going to see this Manta Rider maneuver around the left side of the board, not needing land, collecting additional Feria and just causing all sorts of problems. Yeah, it's definitely something that can very much swing the game in one player's favor. The Manta Rider is a pretty big investment at that 5 Feria, but if it's able to double collect every turn uncontested on the far side of the board, you gain that back very quickly and then can accelerate a massive advantage while you fight for board position on the other side. And one thing to consider about S of Dawn's current play is the positioning. There's a desert taken in the wells, so it's making the axe grinder spot have no access you know Alva can't get that now but also the demon is sitting on the mountain so forcing another mountain to come down in order to get that bomb slinger so gonna make sure that Alva has to reposition if he wants to get a good bomb slinger target and I'm curious to see what he goes for because I think the I, I want to say that the charge is a high value target here and he, it is he goes for it yeah, really nice uh, situation here, clearing the charger first, just because both of the creatures that you currently have on board kill the demon. And a big thing for this type of deck is that self-burn from the demon is actually impacting Alvar's win condition. You're going to have the ground shakers to deal that extra bit of burn. Uh, you're going to have your flame bursts, which now Alvar has used one of, and then you're going to have that Cypher's Wrath for extra damage as well. So the more health this demon can burn off of S of Dawn's life total, really the better for Alvar's win condition as well. So uh, as much as the Charger can impact the board more, the Demon actually makes sense to leave alive for that reason as well. Oh, no Wind Soldier pickup for S of Dawn, unfortunately there. Could have been fantastic. Uh, take care of the Axe Grinder with a double collect and Wind Soldier. Take care of the Bomb Slinger with the Demon. Maybe even set up a Windstorm Charger as well. Uh, the Kaleem's training provides an aggressive opportunity could fly the demon straight to the orb but the axe grinder is just going to answer it very easily so i think the only real line here is step back up collect the feria clear the bomb slinger and just play another charger yeah that looks like the only one again because the charger is the only creature in hand that bomb slinger is in range to kill it no matter where it comes down so you have to step back take the trade into the bomb slinger and then reinforce with the charger it has to be in front of the uh, the orb as well otherwise you play into horse master so uh, S of Dawn now drawing into what looked like poor options for him, at least for now. And another thing about the placement of this charger, it demands another mountain if another bomb slinger was to show up. So just trying to cover as many bases as possible, bomb slingers, horse masters, you know, S of Dawn's playing very well, even though Alva has taken initiative with that play from the previous turn. Yeah, I was interested there if it was going to be another mountain and then something like the Ground Shaker, maybe even Underground Brigand, uh, right in front of the Charger. Because in this type of a situation, S of Dawn could very easily switch the side of the board. Uh, double Prairie out to the left there and then send the Charger to the far side and try to recover through Double Collection away from Alvar's creatures. He's very far away from the orb right here, so you're not as concerned with uh, orb damage and maybe you can switch the side, but... Uh, we'll have to see what Esther Don goes for now that he's picked up that Wind Soldier. 
Yes, it's, it's a difficult situation for us to be in now because Alvar is flooding the board with these small creatures and one charger isn't enough to deal with them. The axe grinders trade with it right now and it demands another event in order to clear them anyway. And then if you hit the uh, the brigand, you're giving your opponent additional faria to work with next turn. So very, very difficult position for S of Dawn to be in. Uh, Last Nightmare, no value here. Wind Soldier's good on the axe grinder, but doesn't clear both of them. It still allows S of Dawn to double clet next turn. There's, I mean, there's possibly a line of play that S of Dawn could go for here where you develop uh, another land in between the wells, Wind Soldier to clear the bottom Axe Grinder, and then use Kaleem's Training and Flash Wind to send your Charger right to the orb because Alvar won't have a creature within range of it. You deal, uh, what would that be, seven damage this turn, and possibly, you know, a good follow up allows you to extend more damage next turn, but looks like he's going to go for the more passive play. I really like that line, actually, though. That would have put a lot of pressure on Alvar, and you'd need answers to it immediately. I, I think the, I mean, the issue S might have with that is it's kind of all in. But do you think S of Dawn is in a situation where he has to go all in? Uh, it looked like it there. Again, you're just not in a good enough uh, follow-up position. Both of these creatures are very easy to deal with for Alvar here. And now Bombslinger picked up is absolutely massive. Cypher's Wrath's going to clear the Charger. It's always tough when you're trading with your Charger because yes, it can get value, but then you set up things like the Cypher's Wrath, maybe Ground Shaker as the follow-up to very easily clear it, and Alvar going to push up the board basically as quick as he can, realizing the S of Dawn is on very limited options here. Very, very difficult for S of Dawn to get back in this match now because Red is in the, in the driving seat, they have the initiative, and when Red has the initiative, it just draws removal. Just keep drawing removal over and over again, and it's very difficult to stop them because they're just going to answer every creature that gets played. And we see an aggressive mountain coming up, and just a pass is Alvar doesn't need to do anything. He just needs to wait until S of Dawn does something and then react to it and answer whatever creatures come down. Yeah, you actually could have gone for uh, prairies instead of the mountain there and used the horse master to push the bomb slinger up aggressively. But in this situation, it's so good to go for ground shaker next turn rather than that little bit of damage on this past turn. So uh, really nice. Uh, Esodon is going to get the clear here, but Alvar, because he saved his fairy last turn, is going to have a ground shaker, which uh, Esodon is going to possibly struggle to deal with. Oh, axe grind is even better. So S. If S of Dawn had to deal with a Grand Shake, he had the answer in Last Nightmare. Doesn't regain initiative, but does hold off the incoming damage. But Axe Grinder, that is not a card you want to Last Nightmare. It's such a poor <laughs> value. Yeah, it, it, you lose three area value on that play. So actually really nice by Alvar going for the Axe Grinder first, because that baits out this Last Nightmare rather than the Ground Shaker, which now will survive because S of Dawn is going to have no way to deal with it. And Underground Boss is a fantastic pickup as well. I actually prefer Ground Shaker in this situation. You've just seen the last nightmare. Your opponent just waste, wasted free Feria. The, the next follow-up play would be Choking Sands. So plus one Choking Sands boss is dealt with. If you play Ground Shaker in this situation, it should live a turn and be able to push that damage. Yeah, and that does look like that's what Alvar is going to go for. Underground Boss, when you pick it up, is always... Uh, it always kind of draws your eye because you can boss and then gain extra fairy in next turn, especially if you pick up Gift of Steel, push a lot of damage through that, and still have another creature follow up because of the combat effect. But Ground Shaker looks so much safer in this situation to actually survive uh, much more than Underground Boss, which could get removed by that Choking Sands. And boss is like a better follow-up play from the Ground Shaker because the Ground Shaker gets to push a bit of damage and then you put the boss behind it and then if a Choking Sands does come down, the Ground Shaker is still going to be applying pressure and threatening that lethal because damage from hand is very easy for Al uh, Alva to get. You know, he has Flame Burst, he has uh, more Ground Shakers, uh, Gift of Steels as well. So uh, S of Dawn is definitely not in a safe position here. Yeah, it does go for the Outland Ranger in a safe spot, which really is his only way of coming back at this stage. Uh, Drew, so he couldn't go for the... Uh, sorry, made the land, so he couldn't go for something like the plus one to the campfire to make it a little safer from the Cypher's Wrath. But the Flame Burst is going to deal with it just as easily, and that looks like it should uh, pretty much seal it here. S of Dawn, Soul Drain delays the inevitable, really. He's just not able to 
do anything to actually clear this ground shaker. Yeah, Flame Burst could have been safe for the orb there, but I do like that decision from Alpha, just saying, you know what, if you, you're not going to win this game without Faria, how do you stop this Faria generation? Just remove the Collector. Al Alva wasn't in any rush to win that game. Uh, he was already winning. So taking a safer line, paid off for Alva, forced to concede from Mess of Dawn, and now we're tied up 1-1. Yeah, very nicely played game there by Alvar. Uh, something that we kind of noticed last monthly cup was Alvar played very passive, uh, very much wanted to take double well control before he pushed up the board. And that game definitely seemed like as soon as he saw he had a little bit of an advantage, he really pushed up the board as quick as he could. Yeah, and it rewarded him with a victory there. And we're going to go into a mono red mirror with these combat decks. Um, S of Dawn starts off with the dream team here. Underground boss, Horsemaster. That is going to be pretty devastating. And we're going to see no Horsemaster come down as an early collector. He's going to use it to leverage the board with that underground boss. Yeah, Horsemaster is always really nice to pick up, but in a situation where you know you're playing against red, Alvar probably will go uh, underground boss with an early gift of steel, just because there's no reason not to play around the Horsemaster and then some form of follow-up from uh, S of Dawn. So Alvar picks up his own Horsemaster now, but has those gift of steels like you said, so now we have Alvar in the better position, because next turn could go into Horsemaster, clear out this underground boss or any threat that's in front of it and then use the additional theory to gift a steal again and push this underground boss way out of red's reach yeah this would be a situation where if s of dawn has a gift of steel he would play it preemptively uh just to play around some form of uh, clear by alvar and if you don't have it which he doesn't alvar is going to definitely exploit this with the horse master possibly even just double gift of steel to keep the boss as safe as possible and this is looking really rough for us of dawn just because of the cards that we see in alvar's hand i think the best line here see the thing is you either just assume he has horse master and maybe build to the other side with a grim guard or if you think there is a horse master anyway you can just mount it in front and play a grim guard stop the double collection get a bit of damage out of it but it's, the read is the read is sad here because if you do build the grim guard in front of you there's no horse master needed so it's ah, such a miserable position for s of dawn to be in yeah i'm trying to think right now if he goes for the grim guard just as a passive you know need it to soak a bit of damage and then you're looking for gift of steel next turn does that create enough fairy again to then firestorm the turn after i'm very surprised by this that s of dawn is basically just throwing cypher away a card that can be very big if it snowballs in this type of a matchup and i believe s of, has basically said he's gonna have horse master so let's just throw a creature there so then my boss can answer it next turn but this additional gift of steel is going to make things very very difficult but there is a firestorm actually so not that difficult actually he's going to be able to clear the board but lose initiative in the process things are going to be passed over to alva but as things stand alva doesn't have a good follow-up play yeah, this could be a situation where you just push underground boss uh down a spot again try to limit that double collection from your opponent and then play something like an underground boss uh brigand sorry in behind and then you're looking for either a flame burst uh maybe ground shaker as that extra one damage follow-up uh, using the underground brigand and you slowly come back into the game right now this is alvar's only threat s of dawn just has to stall long enough that he can find whatever he needs to clear it and another horse master is not what you're looking for yeah actually i think i prefer that line go for the brigand behind and then if any of her creatures follow up say a horse master or maybe a brigand of his own you can get more value out of the firestorm but I think the issue with the draw is you're giving the axe grind a spot, so Firestorm actually becomes worse in that situation. Yeah, it's definitely a spot where he was looking for Bomb Slinger, Flame Burst, something that easily clears off the boss here before it gets more value, before you have to just throw another creature at the board. But I think there was a, a line S could have gone for. I really don't want to see him use the Firestorm here. Although he can recover with the Brigand, it just feels so bad. I kind of feel you have to firestorm now. It's kind of being committed. Horsemaster's n okay. So Horsemaster's not bad. It's not brilliant, 
because Cypher's Wrath just answers it, and then the Horse Master from Alvar pushes this boss into a very dangerous position. But what what Essadorn is trying to do is trying to bait out maybe a bit of removal, but also additional cards down to the fields to get more value out of this Firestorm. Yeah, it definitely seems like he's still looking for that Firestorm, uh, picking up more value on another creature, which he now has. But again, Alvar has that extra tempo of the game right now. He's going to have six Fairy on this next turn, possibly seven, depending on what he draws. So as much as S of Dawn has now cleared the board, if Alvar had a good follow-up, it would be very uh, hard for S to then recover from that position. Both these players going back and forth. Alvar definitely in the driving seat here. Has initiative, has the board first. It's a little unfortunate here, I think, for S of Dawn. Because he's not really picking up. I mean, Grimgard's not bad, I suppose. Grimgard's a bit sturdy. I don't like Grimgard in that position, though. I'd rather put it at the, at the lower p the position above. Because it dodges Bombslinger. Bombslinger is a threat that has to be considered here. Yeah, this is actually a situation, I think, where Alvar could just plus one. Because Esodon, like has that Horse Master in hand, he could have played the Grimguard back a little safer. In this situation, Alvar, I think, now Cypher picked up. Plus one, use your Horse Master, Flame Burst, kill the Grimguard, and Cypher. There's no way that Esodon can play a creature that Cypher can't kill on this next turn. And then you start that snowball really rolling. Yeah, I like that a lot. Very powerful play. I mean, if you want to be more passive, you can just push the the Horse Master back a tile, then just play a Cypher in front of it, but it gives Essadorn an opportunity to collect Feria. Now we're seeing a more defensive position here from Alvar, but that's because the Horse Master is in hand, and there's just no way that Essador can escape the Wrath of the Cypher. It's going to eat something. Yeah, and that's huge in this type of a matchup when you can get Cypher to uh, a snowball against these creatures. It's when it's played in this position, sometimes a Ground Shaker can gain a lot of value against it. If there's an Axe Grinder already down, Flame Burst, Cypher's Wrath, plus that Axe Grinder clears it. But in this situation where Cypher is down first, it's very difficult to stop it from killing at least one creature. And then it gets big enough to kill a second creature, possibly a third creature. And it's it's just insane to try to deal with Cypher in this type of matchup when you don't have just hard removal. If S is happy to invest in more lands you could go for a left side mountain and play an axe grinder and that plays around the horse master that is an option and then you have to build additional land later on in order to uh start collecting but it looks like s is going for the more aggressive line maybe trying to push neutrals to the bottom left hand well and then just send the conga line of axe grinders to his opponent's orb yeah it's interesting here this uh, obviously, he didn't have a good play to put a creature down to play around Cypher. This sets up two different things right now. First, depending on where Cypher moves, Ground Shaker can come down next turn for S and possibly deal with that. Depending if Cypher just moves you know, one space up, you think you have so much time before he actually gets to the orb that he's going to go for the Axe Grinders in that bottom left corner. Very interesting strategy coming through from S of Dawn here. He's playing, he's playing very well. I mean, I think the only options were play nothing or play on the left-hand side of the orb and decide to go for the, uh, the the more aggressive play. You know, going for these aggressive lands, pushing down the middle, aiming for that bottom left-hand well to get as much use out of these axe grinders as possible. But now we see Alva setting up a horse master play for next turn. Cypher can shimmy onto that neutral tile, double neutral, in a diagonally for the uh, the cap 10 and then start getting some value with that horse master. Yeah, that was a situation where Alvar could have horse mastered Cypher right up, but S of Dawn still had you know, the land set up in the right way that Cypher could have been blocked before it hit the orb. So I really like Alvar holding onto that and going for cap 10 here instead. Uh, S of Dawn looks like he's going to stick to his original plan and go for the axe grinders unless he decides to play a, a horse master aggressive right now, but I don't see that being the case. So it looks like we should just see a save for this turn. Defensive ground shaker at the orb's not bad because it plays around horse master in a way that Cypher will die and the ground shaker will live. And it gives you a defensive option for the future. It might actually just go as a blocker. Yeah, okay, so go as a blocker instead to stop this cap 10 from getting some cheeky damage in and getting some Gift of Steals. The Gift of Steals are probably going to be inevitable here, especially with this... Actually, especially with this Ground Shaker pickup. A little, a little bit of off, though. Might have to... 
Might have to go for a bomb stinger instead if he wants to keep this uh this captain nice and healthy. Yeah, Captain's actually pretty big in this spot. Alvar used two Gift of Steels very early on in this game. Uh, so the Captain will start putting them into the deck, which we're not close to fatigue yet, but it could be something later on that if it gets, you know, two attacks, I guess it would be three, because it'll still pull one more Gift of Steel and then shuffle one and then pull one more. If S of Dawn is able to clear it before that happens, then Captain really doesn't gain as much value. I kind of like step back with Cypher into Bomb Slinger and then use the Captain. Now you open yourself up the Grand Shaker, but a Grand Shaker has just been used and there shouldn't be enough area to really deal with that. And I think, yeah, Alva's going to go for what I suggested. And this is nice and clean. It's player and the fact that Esadon A doesn't have enough area to Grand Shaker next turn, but also B, uh, he's just used one. So the chance of another one showing up is very, very slim. Yeah, I think I would have liked Cypher moving up. Uh, to the left one space and get it within Horsemaster range, possibly of whatever this creature is that S of Dawn was setting up. But it does make sense to move back a space and then you have the Horsemaster for your Bomb Slinger here instead. So nice setup by Alvar here to really have all of his options covered no matter what creature came down. Very interesting this choice now. Like you just mentioned, there is the option of Horse Master and the Bomb Slinger down to clear the Axe Grinder. That does starve Esodorn Inferior, which is more valuable in this situation. But if you want to be very aggressive, you can move the Bomb Slinger across, like we were saying with the Cypher a couple of turns ago, make those double neutrals and give an avenue for Cap 10 to go in. And then you could even. No, I can't afford the, the Gift of Steel, unfortunately. So I think the more defensive line is actually fine here, but simply because. Here you set up another collector on the left hand side with the horse master, but you also clear out the fret and the ferrier collector for S of Dawn. Yeah, and you also set up your horse master there, so if it is another axe grinder follow-up from S of Dawn, Horse Master plus the Ground Shaker in hand will clear that as the follow-up. So this sets up a lot of options for uh, whatever S of Dawn plays. Alvar is easily gonna be able to clear it, really no matter where it comes down. And if another axe grinder wants to come down here, it's one life out of reach of the horse master, but the ground shaker sitting in hand is going to answer that very easily. And an aggressive line could come down, and uh, you could play the ground shaker very close to the orb, and then you have all these threats going towards S of Dawn. And if he has to invest any removal on board without any collectors, it's not going to matter. That's that's the unfortunate position here. I think S of Dawn just has to keep developing creatures and kind of just hope. There's no answer to this, and there is. There's the Grand Shaker. It's waiting. Yeah, and that is what Esadon's going to go for. Uh, does plus one again, so he's gaining enough extra Feria, and Axe Grinders are very efficient creatures. In that, even though they get cleared, you know, maybe next turn will be the Underground Boss, and that can then set up the Feria uh, combat gain to get Esadon into some of those more removal options, but it's going to be. Possibly Ground Shaker, Cypher, well, Cypher won't be quite close enough, but Cap 10 and Ground Shaker within range of the orb next turn. I mean, Cypher could even go back into collection here if you're going to play an aggressive Ground Shaker. Because it's already, it's, it's, it can move up one, but it's going to be another turn away before it can start hitting orb. And it might actually just be more valuable as a 5-5 collector. It's going to be very difficult for Esadorn to clear this in this position because he doesn't have any collectors of his own, which means Feria is a very valuable resource and will be need to used, be used reactively uh, with creatures rather than removal. So I don't actually mind Cap 10, um, sorry, uh, Cypher moving to an aggressive, sorry, a double collection position, but he doesn't go for the Ground Shaker here. It just looked perfect. I don't know why you'd yep. give Esadorn any Feria in this position. Very odd one here. Um, now that is going to be the last gift of steel used, so I believe Captain will shuffle one here uh, into the deck, but it's not going to pull it quick enough. Um, and this just doesn't set up quite as much damage. I'm, I'm not really sure why this type of a situation is the play Oliver chose to go for. Now it, it is another aggressive creature, but Ground Shaker just looks so solid. So what about S of Dawn? He's been given some breathing room. This is a lifeline, allowing the Axe Grinder to collect Feria is very valuable in the situation. It could lead to a more aggressive line. We could see a Horse Master maybe get played to block a potential hit next turn. Go face, hit for five damage, and then Cypher's Wrath, the Horse Master. 
you know, we are going to see that Horse Master. That seemed very obvious, uh, going for the Horse Master there. You want to keep the Axe Grinder uh, dealing that damage to the orb. It's interesting if he goes for the Brigand here. Is there enough on the follow-up? Currently at 12, Flame Burst, let's say 9. Wrath is 7 if it hits the right target. And then the Brigand, possibly Gift of Steel, is only 5, so... Esso Don would be looking for something like Gift of Steel and then Flame Burst draw next turn if he's going for this all-in play. See, I think I prefer a Cypher's Wrath here because you're guaranteed two damage. So that's going to bring Alvar down to 10. You draw a card instead of developing land. So this will allow uh, more potential to draw Gift of Steel, more potential to draw, say, um, another Flame Burst. Flame Burst already in hand, and this will allow for a lethal on the follow-up. Uh, really nice staggering here by Alvar, uh, as long as he does it in the right order. Oh, I guess Captain will shuffle when he won't draw one right now. Yeah, I was just going to say, really nice ordering there of Captain attack first, so that you draw the Gift of Steel, then Gift of Steel the Brigand, but uh, it is going to shuffle one into the deck, not draw. And I guess now we should see that Ground Shaker that we've been talking about uh, on the previous turn. So, yeah, it's not going to be nearly as enough damage. Uh, the the ground shake the ground shaker clears up the axe grinder finally, but the one reason that was able to happen was the silent horse master was able to set up that clear. The cypher's wrath would have stopped that, and the axe grinder actually has a stronger chance to represent lethal than say a uh, brigand in this position. Yeah, and a Bomb Slinger picked up could clear off Cypher, uh, but S of Dawn is just not going to be enough here. That Captain is going to pull another Gift of Steel, and that should give Alvar exactly lethal. Just doesn't have enough Fairy at this stage to have enough options to actually clear enough of these creatures to survive. Yeah, way off. It needs another, it needs another free Fairy, realistically, to Bomb Slinger the Captain. I guess Bomb Slinger the Captain... Flame Burst, the Brigand would have been fine, but again, just not enough area. Yeah, and the Bomb Slinger does come down. Looks like it's going to clear Cypher, but the Gift of Steel will be drawn no matter what here. Yeah, actually, clearing the Cypher there is incorrect. You clear the Captain because your opponent then has to draw damage to finish you off because there was only 10 damage at the wall. So very interesting yeah, there. That's true, Cypher did have uh, 8 attack. Looking at, you know, the on board, Cypher 8 attack versus the uh, Captain 6 attack, you generally lean towards the, the larger attack there, but because the Captain will draw that Gift of Steel, that's plus 3. So you were still looking at 1 damage off uh, if S of Dawn had gone for that clear instead, but uh, still didn't look like, no matter what the clear was, that he was going to be able to have enough time to come back into the game there, and Alvar goes up 2 to 1. So Alvar taking the lead, Mono Red doing its thing. It looks like it's going to be blue green ramp. And we did and we did speak about this earlier. We feel that one of the stronger lineups right now in Pantheon is red combat, yellow tempo, and blue green ramp because all the you're kind of utilizing all the best bits of every color, uh, the strongest archetypes, the strongest decks. And in Pantheon, this is probably a lineup we'll see coming from a lot of players. Now, Alvar, on the other hand, might run mono green because it's kind of his specialist, uh, specialism. Very strong mono green play, always has been. But Est of Dawn is going to stick to, you know, the, the more top tier, highly competitive lineup. Yeah, it's just very easy with the way that this deck is designed to ramp out, uh, get your Frog Tossers, which are a very big swing in this type of a matchup. And then, of course, you have things like the Sky Whale, uh, Crystal Flower, something that could be played in here as well. But with the Water Ellies, with Earth Crafts, with uh, Wood Elementals, if he's playing those as well, very easy to ramp up to those higher land requirement cards. We're already looking at a situation where S of Dawn is, you know, another land ramp away from Frog Tosser next turn. Yeah, this land ramp is going to be very helpful. Earthcraft in a situation also fantastic because it's allowing him to draw more cards and we see the draw into the Wood Elemental. So while Wood Elemental might not have the most attractive attack statistic, the life statistic is very nice because it dodges the Flame Burst and also dodges the Cypher's Wrath. So things looking good for Rest of Dawn already. Now Underground Boss comes down just because it almost has to. It's another creature onto the board for Alvar here. Uh, we'll hopefully get maybe a Horse Master to get that Underground Boss right to the orb here, but 
Uh, Alvar should be very aggressive in this type of matchup. He can't allow S of Dawn to just have that far side control and really just do whatever he wants over there. Gonna see the Feed of Forest come on the Willow here, just trying to draw more cards. Probably dig deeper for a threat to answer, say, that underground boss. But unfortunately, nothing picked up this turn. But two creatures in the wells, double collecting. Unless a Horse Master does come up, you know, Acidor's in a good position now to be the first aggressor. Yeah, Elderwood Embrace is actually not what you want to see in this type of situation. You'd want maybe another Earthcraft for more cycle, uh, or another creature um i'm not exactly sure what it, that creature would be because frog tosser doesn't have a good target right now but when you're playing on the far side these type of buff cards really are not what you want to see in this situation so i think there's going to be a gamble here if the frog goes over to the left and covers the mountain it's out of reach of the underground boss so it's not going to gain any value and then if it doesn't get removed there's an elderwood embrace to back it up and we're going to see if Acidorn gets the good roll here. And yes, he does. So it covers the mountain outside of reach of this underground boss. And unless a Cypher's Wrap or something like that is picked up, this frog could actually be really deadly. Yeah, and, and now that buff becomes that much more impactful in hand for us of Dawn. You know, right now, Alvar, that 2-2, two, two, you probably don't think that it's that much. But next turn, when it becomes 4-6, it actually could start putting you on a, a decent clock here. And Alvar's boss kind of sitting in no man's land. Looks like he is going to come back defensive uh, just to respect that possibility. Oh, and a Feed the Forest pickup as well. So now could even feed the Wood Elemental. It does, does leave your double collection a bit more vulnerable. So could alternatively feed the water elemental instead to make sure no flame burst comes down to stop that double collection. But what I would like to see from S of Dawn is another land built next to the orb. And then the frog can jump over, get the Elderwood embrace, and it's out of reach of the underground boss. Aurora's Creation is a very interesting card in this deck coming from S of Dawn. Uh, I've kind of seen it here and there in these type of decks, just because if you do get a very valuable you know, Frog Tosser to survive, you can then Creation and play another one for free. Uh, also, in the early game, if you have an Elemental that you really need to accelerate more into like your Forest, for example, you can uh, grab another Wood Elemental. But it's interesting in this type of deck because sometimes it just doesn't have a good target and it ends up being a dead card in hand. And we're having that situation right now. You could creation the water elemental so a draw could be used. But just opening yourself up to the firestorm. And we're going to see the forest come down. We're going to see a hop over out of reach of the underground boss. And four damage going to the orb. So just a very annoying situation for Alva to deal with. Yeah, it's something that Red always struggles with against certain decks. Is that mobility is very difficult without a horse master to keep up with. Uh, in this type of situation, even just that little frog having jump allows that switch of sides and, and continue to play away from these creatures that Alvar has. He's going to have to continue to move back, but it's a situation where you have to play a defensive ground shaker here because this frog actually means that much damage over time. Never feed the forest pick up a bit of a whiff draw there, unfortunately. Could a uh, jump back double collect hit for four then feed the four five frog? Uh, just so it doesn't meet its end at the hands of, say, the Grand Shaker or the Underground Boss. But Earthcraft, very good draw there. The reason I say feed instead of draw is because if you draw a whale, you're in a very good situation there because you can build the land to get the whale off that turn. Maybe stop the aggression on the top right-hand corner. We'll see what the Earthcraft brings. Yeah, if you're going for a draw there, Earthcraft is probably the best draw that you could get because it allows you to build the land like you're saying, that if you draw a Sky Whale, you can then play it, and also gets you that cycle to another card. Uh, Runin now picked up could be Runin and then feed so that you can play Runin again, but it'll be interesting how aggressive SF Dawn wants to be, and that's actually a very interesting combo now. Runin and Aurora's Creation combination in this deck. I like it a lot, actually. Runin and Aurora's Creation... It's going to be a nightmare for Red to deal with. An aggressive Runin and a defensive Runin, both which are not going to die permanently, which can be replayed uh, on the, after their death, and they're going to get bigger. And the bigger these Runins get, the harder Red is going to have with dealing with them. Yeah, and especially with these jump creatures, that double collection on the far side of the board, which is currently uncontested by uh, Alvar's creatures, 
these runins will be that much more and more impactful as the game goes on because you have a situation where you can play one every single turn. Firestorm, not a bad pickup here. Probably a little bit better than Gift of Steel actually because it kills the runin and it kills the water elemental. Is there a better play just going for possibly an aggressive ground shaker here? Actually, um, I don't I guess think you... Firestorm does enough because you don't kill the 4-5, so double collection is going to continue anyway. So killing the water elemental in this position doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, it's definitely something to consider. Of uh, You know, you can clear one creature, which is great if that actually means an economy gain. But in this situation, it's going to be double collection no matter what. So uh, we probably should see... A continuation of lands across towards that 4-5, but Alvar is actually not going to go for it. He's going to recognize that he needs to be that much more aggressive right away. Sky Whale pickup, very nice here for S of Dawn. Can eliminate one of these aggressive threats, put a 6-6 six, six in range of the orb, or defensively, depending on what S wants to do, but it's going to need to gain some additional Feria, and this can be managed by going plus one, or could even feed say the frog, or could have fed the runin, could have played runin feed. Like, that would have been an option as well. The sky whale's gonna come down first, and it's going to a more defensive position. So it looks like Esther Dawn is valuing the fact that he needs to protect the sky whale to remove the pressure and can't play with it as an aggressive creature. I mean, Sky Whale is almost always in an aggressive position as well because it has that charge three. Even where it is, which is a more protected spot, it can still reach the orb next turn. Uh, it does go for that hit and feed like you've been talking about for a couple turns now. Um, and picking up another Elderwood Embrace, really not what Us of Dawn wants in this stage, I don't think. I think you should set up lethal now with Runin, right? You play aggressive Runin. Then you have two six sixes. You could even just creation the whale and then swallow up the the ground shaker. But I think I like going for ruining more because you don't give away that you have a win condition on the follow up turn. Yeah, this is a really interesting one as well. Going for the creation on the sky whale. Um, hopefully, it's in an aggressive position and it's not. It's playing that more defensive line coming out from S of Dawn. Uh, but does take away the cap 10, so as much as he has played these Sky Whales in more protected positions, not setting up that two-turn lethal like you were talking about, he has limited Alvar's ability to find his own lethal setup. A uh, bit of a missed opportunity there, I think, for S. The, the, Runin, the Runin Whale was setting up lethal, and I think the most logical next step for Alvar is to play a land and then move the Grand Shaker across the block. And then you could creation into a whale, swallow that blocker, and then hit for lethal. So, uh, although this works out perfectly fine, it does give Alvar some breathing room. It gives him time to actually come back. Whereas before, I think it was almost a guaranteed lethal next turn with the previous play. Yeah, Alvar does have options here, like you're saying. Uh, even just the second ground shaker in hand. I guess it's the third ground shaker, because the one sky whale... Uh, no, I believe this is the second ground shaker, sorry. Um, that does put both of the sky whales down to six fives. So both of the ground shakers will then be able to clear them and free these swallowed creatures. But the big thing is that these with charge three, again, have that extra mobility. They're going to be able to kite around the board around uh, Alvar's creatures and try to find those lines for lethal anyway. And as you can see, ground shaker moves up to that defensive position. Just trying to block any potential damage coming from the Sky Whale. Yeah, Sadly. no creature follow up. Cypher would have been the only thing Alvar could have played there, and he's going to save it for either a Ground Shaker, uh, save that fairy for either a Ground Shaker or a Firestorm next turn, depending on what he needs. So the 5 6 can jump down and collect, and then you could even dash Rune in in between the Ground Shaker and the Water Elemental. So. Given the water elemental bit of protection, but also a creature that can kill a ground shaker. Or maybe you're gonna set up lethal now. So go in, push six, play Runin, and just say, do you have an answer to both of these? Yeah, that looks like that's what he's gonna go for. Uh, this also sets up a situation where this one sky whale is over open water as well. So the cap 10, depending on the way that Alvar is able to either AoE or, you know, whatever the case may be, he needs to create a land or he's going to lose that cap 10 for free here. 
And there is a clear. The the boss can go into the one whale. Firestorm. Flame burst the rune in. And then two creatures have come out. And there's going to be enough Faria here that cap that the uh, Alva doesn't need to draw a card. And he does have the resources to make uh, the clear to stop the leaf ball. And can now develop land in order to protect the cap 10 if he chooses. Yeah, and I don't think there's any reason to not create the land there to save cap 10. Playing either Cypher... Uh, instead of the Flame Burst, just doesn't seem like it does enough here because Rune and clears it very easily. Ground Shaker, same situation. So really needs to set up that land here. Uh, as I've done, still in a situation where he could push five damage on this next turn. Will he pick up another buff? Yeah, go for the Elderwood here. Just take that draw. If you can't, jump back up to double collection, drop the Rune in again. Make, make at Alva answer this Rune in every turn. Just needs a little bit more. Could I actually, I guess, just run the water elemental into the boss if that's your worst case scenario and then rune in again. That eight damage is still going to be enough for lethal, still going to be enough for, uh, still going to be very difficult for your opponent to deal with. So we shall see what Esodon decides to go for. I don't think hitting the orb here is the right choice, even though it puts your opponent to one. I don't, I think six and one makes no difference at this point. If there was a buff, it'd be different because it'd be lethal. But runin is going to be the way this game finishes. And I think clearing the boss is, like I said, probably the better option. Because then, how does this get answered? It's going to need, like, a bomb slinger. Then the cap 10 runs into it. I think my only... I guess the only issue with clearing instead of collecting is if this does get answered... There is no rune in follow up on the next play, on the next turn, but there is a. You can make a bulky shift in Octopus to set up a double collection and then play rune in on the following. Yeah, but this looks like it will be enough. A Gift of Steel would have set Captain to uh, within range of clearing rune in with something like a Cypher's Wrath, but in this situation, Alvar now doesn't have enough damage. That looks like rune in is going to seal the game for Us of Dawn. And there we have it blue green ramp. Able to take a game off Alva's Red Combat, tying the series up 2-2. And no, I, I don't think we even expected this game to be a blowout. It, it was going to be a 3-2. It, it, it had to be. It, it's two monthly cup champions going at <laughs> it here. And there we have it. Concede coming out from Alva, accepting his medicine, ruining, taking the win. So Alva's next deck is the one I'm going to be most curious about. Will it be a blue-green ramp or will he stick to his guns, the tried and tested, the deck that helped him secure a championship? And that is the mono green. Yeah, and one of the big things, actually, as much as S of Dawn did win, Alvar got the information there, knowing that there is Runin in the deck, knowing that there is that Aurora's creation in the deck, things that you can play around in certain situations, and like you predicted, Alvar going for what looks like just that mono green. Yeah, mono green, I mean, I, there's no reason for Alvar not to run mono green, he's such a good pilot for this deck, he has so much experience over the last few months, uh, it'd be a no-brainer, and now he's going up against blue green ramp so swallow is going to be his main concern can so i i think this is an interesting question for you scorch because we were talking about this a bit earlier do you feel that alpha has to be the aggressor here i think so uh, i mean it really depends on what you get as your early creatures uh, early buffs early movement type of thing um but in this type of situation you can't allow this ramp deck to just play their own game a lot of time they'll i mean s of dawn very easily could just switch sides he's got that water elemental which is going to have the jump and out collect greens collection and then from the opposite side of the board you can pick up value with your frog tossers uh, and then you're looking at getting your late game runin or late game sky whale swallow as the win condition so i think green has to be more aggressive than they generally would be in this type of a matchup and Alva has taken a more aggressive land approach, you know, going straight diagonally across on the second tier of tiles. The more defensive position, as you were seeing from S of Dawn now, is the uh, the inner tiles, you know, from outside the orbs. And I like this from S of Dawn. I was thinking about this. You want to contest the wood elemental, and unfortunately, not getting the forest down, Elderwood Embrace is not going to help here. So, actually, I'm not too sure 
why you'd go for the War Elemental here. I think I'd just like go on both sides and splitting your lands up because Elderwood Embrace is not even an option at this point. Yeah, your, your Wood Elemental looked like it would have been at least good enough to survive for the upcoming turn, maybe a, another turn if you get the Elderwood Embrace to line up correctly, and then you could have used that to push more lands up the right side and get that Water Elemental into good jump positions to double collect over there. In this situation, S of Dawn now looks like he's behind. Your creature is going to get cleared. He has to switch sides, basically a turn later than you'd really like to. Going to go for a 7-3. That is a big octopus to deal with yeah hoping that there's no power up here uh hoping that the grove guardian has to run into it um you could actually protect the grove guardian in this situation you can actually shimmy the, the grove guardian down to the left corner of the double collection spot move the wood elemental up to tank it and then maybe set up a willow behind it and then just use those two creatures to protect your grove guardian but to be fair i don't think alvar is too concerned here you can take a more aggressive forest move up to the left corner clear and then kind of reset things but he sets up fiery and golem for next turn or potentially verdrant force yeah i in this situation i actually don't think that i mind the grove guardian just trading into the octopus um, obviously it would have been really nice if you could have played a Verdurum Force uh, as the follow-up, but when you're setting up that Therian Golem next turn, the two creatures here, the Wood Elemental and the Living Willow, still contest the Water Elemental, and otherwise they would have both died to keep your Grove Guardian alive. So I think this is actually a better position, trading one for one, instead of what would have been trading one for possibly two. And the fairy uh, representation on both creatures is equal because the Grove Guardian got to collect a fairy, so reducing its cost essentially to four, and the octopus cost four. So the fairy trade-off is even, but what Alva gained was initiative and tempo. And the move with the wood elemental there is super smart, playing around that Elderwood Embrace, so I really, really like that from Alva. Yeah, and that's again based off information that he got in the last game. Sometimes those type of buff cards aren't included in these type of ramp lists because you're running things like Deepwood Stalker as that extra chunk of damage. But because Alvar saw that those buffs are included in uh, S of Dawn's deck, he knows that he has to play around something like that and a very heads up movement like you're saying. Ooh, the choice is 7-7 seven, seven or 5-10. I really like 5-10 here, getting that extra life. The 5 attack right now is enough to uh, challenge the two elementals on board. This does give a fantastic frog tosser opportunity for S of Dawn. He can kill the wood element, uh, the so he can kill the willow with the water elemental, or kill the wood elemental who is behind. So, actually, two interesting decisions. I think the willow is probably better just to stop any feed the forest shenanigans. Yeah, does that line up enough? Uh, I guess could go for a plus one here because Frog Tosser is going to have uh, enough life to survive. You can plus one other would embrace. Oh, he goes for the back clear. Very interesting. I thought that was going to be clearing the Willow with Frog Tosser and the Water Elemental here. Yeah, I could plus one Elder would embrace, I suppose, and then just like stick five damage onto the Willow, make sure Feed the Forest isn't very good. And it still has a lot of life then, but it doesn't... Problem is, if you if you run into this Willow now, the the Firing Golem and the Willow clear out the Water Elemental, but I guess you're still in a very good position where you can collect a lot of Feria. Yeah, the, the big thing here is Esodon has set up that frog for what possibly could be double collection. If Alvar wants to push these creatures aggressively uh, and clear the Elemental and the Frog Tosser, for example, then the frog gets free reign over the, the left bottom corner. But if Alvar has to step back and clear the frog and respect that double collection, the frog tosser is possibly set up to be the extra damage to clear the Ethereum Golem next turn. So it's a very interesting situation there. And there's the feed like you're talking about. So really nice by Esso Don that he was able to get that hit onto the, the Living Willow. So the choices are now, do you kill the Willow? I'm um, sorry, the, the, the Water Elemental, or do you kill the frog tosser? Maybe even just go face. Maybe just uh, chuck an Elderwood on Brace on. Punch for seven. Oh, use the Empress command. I didn't see this line. This line is perfect because you keep the Willow I... and move it back into double collection. Yeah, I was actually thinking of this in the opposite order of uh, Emperor's command the Elemental 
so that the Therian Golem can kill it, and then buff the Willow so it's even safer against some form of follow-up, whether it's Frog Tosser or if those Deepwood Stalkers are in this deck. Uh, but this also very nicely for Alvar sets up that double collection with the Willow because it survives, also sets up a lot of damage from the Therian Golem and then possibly Verdurum Force set up next turn. Really tricky situation for S of Dawn because the one way he's going to be able to answer these big Farian Golems is through Sky Whale. Being able to swallow them up in that 6-6 six, six down and then applying pressure with that card but currently just drawing a load of land ramp the wood elemental is not a bad pickup now because it does give the option to feed the right hand wood elemental then play a new one yeah and again having that feed option uh before you do anything else gives you so many more options earthcraft is another very good cycle gives you that land ramp towards sky whale if it's something that you pick up obviously can't play it this turn but can play it on the next turn and then a frog tosser picked up is beautiful that clears the willow this is a big swing for us of dawn here and the positioning of this frog tosser is so important because it now lines up the frog and the two frog tossers to kill the farian golem if need be uh the farian golem actually is kind of in a weird spot is in that position where it probably just wants to go orb, but Alvar doesn't have... Well, actually, he does have a follow-up play. He could plus one into Farian Golem and just continue to apply pressure. And I feel that might just be the best option here. It depends on how aggressive he wants to be, because he could hit the orb and then feed that Therian Golem and play both the Verdurum Force and the Therian Golem in hand. Uh, but right now, you're seeing what... The struggle of this green can sometimes be a lot of their big creatures are in that five six sometimes seven depending if somebody uh, prefers running an oak father as well but if you limit that feria collection from these type these green decks they very much struggle to reinforce their creatures on the board and that's what we're seeing alvar that double collection would have been so important for him and clearing that was massive for us at dawn i like this my main reason is because Already it's a struggle to kill the one Farian Golem. Place another one down. How does this get answered? Sky Whale is pretty much the only way. And I think Earthcraft is going to tell us if Sky Whale is going to be the answer here. Yeah, and as I've done with that other Wood Elemental in hand does have extra time. Uh, second Earthcraft picked up means you can't go for the... Uh that Earthcraft play because then you wouldn't have enough Faria for the Sky Whale, but... Uh, Wood Elemental will set up a taunt in front of the orb, so it will at least delay another turn for one of these Therian Golems hitting the orb. I wonder if this is a situation where you use all of your creatures to clear the Therian Golem and then set up a Wood Elemental to delay and just really hope that you get that Sky Whale next turn. I think you might have the Frog Tosser here. You jump down and collect with the Frog, so that's in double collection position. You then clear the 7-9 with the, with the other Frog Tosser. And then you get an additional frog, and this could potentially collect for you as well, given its position. Uh, if it was to get someone in the center, center uh, in front of the orb, it can jump over to the right-hand side and collect, and then just hope you draw that Sky Whale. Actually going to clear the bigger Therian Golem here, investing everything into it. That is a big play for us of Dawn. That is all of his Varia used here. Uh, does very likely set up good collection for the next turn, but really big investment there. So I like Shimmy to the left here, collect Faria, hit the frog, feed the Farian Golem, and then maybe go into Verdur and Force then. Uh, just starve S of Dawn of Faria, because he's relying on that so much. And he, he needs card draw as well. There's obviously no whale in hand, and whale is going to be one of the only ways you can manage a card like Verdurin Force and Farian Golem. Yeah, I think my only issue with this play is that you then need to plus one to play both of these Verdurin Forces, and that means that the second one isn't in a good position to set up lethal next turn. I think I would have liked to see the Therian Golem just hit the orb and then feed it and double Verdurin Force in behind because this second Verdurin Force now is in a position where it's not really going to be threatening that, that lethal next turn. Yeah, actually, that is another option as well. I think 
This is more of an Alvar style play, you know. He feels like he's in control, he's taking no damage, things are going his way. S of Dawn is on the ropes, playing reactively, so taking a more conservative, more paced line. But if you wanted to play more aggressively, the hit to the orb there could have been really good. But I, why? See, this is why I like the frog jumping down last turn and then using the frog tossers, all the frog tossers to clear the one firing golem, because then you'd have a double collector here, which, is out, which would have been out of reach of that other firing golem. Yeah, and, and now Esadon's going to have to try to establish that with the Water Elemental because he used he made so much of an investment on the last turn to clear the Therian Golem, which obviously worked out. He was able to deny any orb damage on this turn. Uh, he's in a situation where he needs that Feria just to be able to Sky Whale if and when he draws it. If he had drawn Sky Whale, you know, this turn, it would have been fantastic. But, oh, that is the lethal now with the Grove Keeper picked up for Alvar. Yep. Feed the forest is going to come down on that virgin force. Grove Caller going to teleport over. Finish him off. And Alva takes his first game in this monthly cup. And he will proceed on to the next round. With S of Dawn, unfortunately, getting eliminated there. But well played to both players. That was a very back and forth match. Uh, well, very back and forth series, actually. And could have went either way. Yeah, really could have. Uh, what really came down to, I think, decks that these players are both going to be very known for. Alvar, like you said, playing that green is very much his style. Uh, S of Dawn, in the run that he had to win his monthly cup, uh, played the green-blue ramp very well. Uh, of course, that was the meta of the Tree of Everlife, and that is the deck has changed a lot since then. But the tech choices that he made, I think very easily could have taken him far into the monthly cup today, but Alvar ends up coming out on top. Esadorn had a very, very tough opponent going forward there in the first round, but Alva, our current monthly cup champion, takes the win and will proceed to round two where maybe can continue that streak. And it's also important to note as well that Alva has a bounty on his head. So if Esadorn had have won that game, $100 would have been pocketed right there and then, but Alva retains that bounty and maybe if Alva is able to take this monthly cup, he can keep a hold of that too and get an extra $100. Yeah, always would be nice to uh, have that bounty kept in your hands at the end of the day. So we're going to go to a break, guys, and set up the next match for you. We should have an exciting one for you coming up. Maybe a community favorite will feature in round two. So don't go anywhere. We will be back very soon with more Monthly Cup action. And yeah, so stay tuned. <laughs> 